Hello students, uh, my name is Fazal Wahab and we are uh, going to discuss uh, today the addition of vectors. Our main topic is the scalars and vector quantities and we will be discussing today in this video, uh, we will be discussing today the addition of vectors. Okay, So uh, vectors can be added by using two methods. One is geometric method also called the head to tail rule. And the second word, one is the trigonometric method or rectangular component method. Okay, so these are the two methods by which you can add two vectors uh, or more than two vectors. Okay, so uh, first of all, we will uh, take start from geometric method, which is head to tail rule. So how can we add two vectors by using head to tail rules? Okay, this is very simple method. Let's say we have uh, two vectors and one vector is let's see let's say this one is vector a and another vector which is vector b uh, let's say this is vector b this is vector b and we have to add these two vectors by using head to tail rule so simple method is draw this vector a a representative vector for a which is equal in magnitude is that of a in with same direction is vector a okay so magnitude of this vector and magnitude of this the represent representative vector of this a both will have the same magnitude in same direction okay now we will take this another vector representative vector for vector b which will have the same magnitude and same direction same direction is like this and same magnitude is vector b this is vector b we will okay now we will join first we will draw a vector a and then we will put this vector b with the tip of the first vector which is vector a okay so vector a the first uh, head to, in head to tail rule what we do the head of the first vector is coincided with the tail of the second one we have these two vector so this one is the first vector vector a and it's not necessary that vector a must be the first vector you can put vector b is the first vector and then add vector a uh, with the vector b so we will have the same results and i will show this to you okay so now what we will do finally we will join the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector this one in the direction of this vector which we will get by joining the tail of the first vector to the head of the tip of the last one that will be the resultant vector in the direction of l of that resultant vector will be from the tail of the first one to the head of the last one and this is called the head to tail rule okay now uh, uh, and uh, finally in the uh, in head to tail rule we uh, add vector one vector to another the head of the first vector is coincided with the tail of the second one and then this tail of the second one is coincided with the third one and so on and finally we join the tail of the first one to the head of the last one and then we will get the resultant vector the direction of that resultant vector will always be from the tail of the first one to the head of the last one and this is called the head to tail rule okay we are discussing the first the head to tail rule now under this uh, discussion we will uh, there is another law which is called parallelogram law we will be discussing that one the parallelogram law okay and parallelogram law as we discuss in head to tail rule for example you have two vectors a and b you have let's say these are the two vectors as we did in the head to tail rule let's say this is vector a and this one is vector b let's say suppose this one is vector b now we have to add both of them so what can we do by using head to tail rule first we will put the vector a with same magnitude is a in same direction is a okay and then we will put vector b to the tip of the first one with the same magnitude as b in the same magnitude same direction as b this one same direction in same magnitude this is vector b okay we can do this either uh, th uh, this way or we can put vector b 
in the first position and vector a on the second position in both the cases we will have the same result for example we will uh, draw a parallel vector for b which will be this one with same magnitude in same direction this is parallel to vector b this is vector b okay and then parallel to vector a we will draw like this one this is vector a which is equal in magnitude is a and parallel to, and with the same uh, same direction is a which is parallel to so this one is parallel to this one this one is parallel this one is vector a okay one option is this one we will put vector a in the first place and vector b in the second place and we will get the resultant vector like this one okay we will this one will be the resultant vector okay or we can put vector b in the first place and vector a on the second place and again we will get the same result okay so this is called the parallelogram law in a parallelogram the opposite sides will represent the same vectors as these are the opposite sides these uh, representing the same vectors vector a is here vector a is here these are the opposite two sides vector b and vector b and both of these options to keep uh, uh, vector a first and vector b on the second place or vector b on the first place and vector a on the second place when you you complete both of these options and then you draw the resultant vector you will get the same resultant vector which will be the diagonal of this parallelogram this will become a parallelogram because this one is parallel to this one this one is parallel to this one you got a parallelogram and in both the cases you are getting the diagonal is the resultant vector so this is called the parallelogram law of the addition of the vector okay so uh, this one also prove another law which we, we will uh, study that one is the commutative law of uh, vectors and and commutative law vector a plus vector b like this one vector a plus vector b you got this vector which is the resultant vector okay or is equal to vector b plus vector a you are getting the same result a plus b you got this diagonal of the parallelogram which is the resultant vector and vector b plus a is you got again the same resultant vector so vector a plus b is equal to vector b plus a vector so this is called the commutative law the commutative law of vector so let me mention this here commutative law law of vector addition okay so doesn't need to mention this one is commutative law vector a plus vector b it is the same as vector b plus vector a in both this thing we mentioned this one vector a plus b you got this resultant vector and again vector b plus a you got the same resultant vector so both have the same magnitude and this is called the commutative law of vector addition okay uh, another law is there which we will uh, be discussing this one that is the distributive law of vector addition so we are going to uh, discuss this one and then we will finally find out the magnitude of the resultant vector by using law of cosine uh, which is also important so we will be discussing that one now associative law now we have to explain this associative law here and this is called the associative law let's say a plus b plus c is equal to a o, a plus b plus c if we add a plus b a and b first and then c we will get the same result if we add first b and c and then finally we add a to b plus c we will get the same result in both of the cases first of all we add a plus b and then c in this case we will do this one and in this case we will do first a b plus c we will add b plus c and then finally we will add a to b plus c 
in both the cases we will have the same result is both both will have the same result look at this one for example this is vector a and this is vector b and first we add both of them vector a plus vector b is a plus b we got this result okay this one is the a plus b we add a and b and we got this is the resultant vector which is a plus b and then finally we add c to the resultant this resultant this one for example this will become like this one this is a plus b a plus b and then we are adding c to this one like this one and finally we get this result this one is b plus c sorry a plus b a plus b this one is a plus b and plus c this is a plus b and this is vector c finally we will get this result okay this is this one this one okay so in the first case in the left hand side we are adding a and b first we are getting this result we are getting this result and then we add a plus b to vector c vector c and we are getting this result is like this one okay now in the right hand side what we will do first we will add b and c look, look at this is b plus c we are getting this this is b this is vector c and we are adding both of them this is b plus c sorry for this this is b plus c b plus c this is b plus c and then what we need to do we are doing a we are adding a to vector this vector this resultant this is vector a and finally we will get this resultant this one okay here b and c are added and we are getting b plus c and then finally we are adding a to b plus c we are getting this result this will become finally for example this one is b plus c this one is this resultant vector is b plus c b plus c now we are adding a this is a to b plus c b plus c is this one this one is b plus c this one is b plus c and this is vector a and this one you will get this result this one this one okay in both the cases we will have the same result and you can uh, represent these two figures in the same figure in single figure so you can do this this has been already mentioned in the book and uh, okay let me draw this for you in a single diagram so how can we do this one in a single diagram for example uh, let's say we have these uh, vectors this one is vector a let's say this one is a little bit different okay this one is vector a this one is vector b this one is vector b this one is vector c let's say this one is vector c c this is vector b and now first of all we are doing this one a plus b so add a plus b this is the resultant vector which is a plus b it is a plus b we got this one is a plus b a plus b and now add this a plus b this one to c we will get this resultant we will get this the final resultant vector which is this one this is a plus b a plus b and then plus c plus c now in the same diagram we are adding first b plus c so this is b and this is c we will get the resultant for them is this one this is b plus c b plus c okay this is b plus c and then add a 
to this b plus c you are getting the same resultant vector this is b plus c b plus c in a this b plus a this a to b plus c you will get this resultant vector so this is equal to a plus because you are getting the same result a plus b plus c b plus c so this is called the associative law of the vector addition so uh, we discuss in today's class we discuss the uh, head to tail rule and then parallelogram law then commutative law of vector addition and the associative law of vector addition okay in the next video we will be discussing the law of cosine to find out the resultant vector for example uh, you got these two vectors a and this is vector b and finally you are getting this resultant vector which is E a this is vector b and this is the final resultant vector so we will find out the magnitude of the resultant vector by law of cosine law of cosine and the next video we will be discussing this one and also we will find out this angle by using sine law of sine law of sines so we will be discussing these two uh, laws law of cosine and law of sine in the next video and uh, at the same time trigonometric method which is a very lengthy method in one of the question of this method is very important to add two vectors by rectangular component method which is very very important uh, question uh, regarding the examination point of view so we will be discussing this one so in the coming class we will be discussing these law of sine and law of cosine thank you